Hi there, everyone. Welcome to Squid School. We're here with Coach Mike. Hello. Coach Andre. Hello. And Coach Simon. Yo. And we are going to talk about the maps and modes in League, and then we're going to go and play them. I'm Coach Jeff. I am an X rank competitive player. And then the other coaches are generally around B rank, and they're relatively new to the game. So I'm going through and teaching them the basics. First of all, at the very beginning of the game, there's always a ton of clams down there. You can just go straight out from mid and have a power clam by the time you get to mid every single time. It's very consistent how many clams there are down there. The basket, as you can see, is over there. Primary two things that you usually have to defend against are someone coming through closed, so going up here, and someone going over the bridge. The bridge is, of course, the fastest way to get to the basket, so if you score a wipe and you just need to get a clam in as fast as possible, it goes through that way. But let's talk about the advantage of going closed, because closed is extremely powerful and you see it a lot. Here's the thing about closed. If, if you aren't watching closed, someone comes up here, there are two places you can shoot this person from. You can kind of shoot them from down here, but you have a disadvantage if you're shooting them from down there. So usually you need a numbers advantage to clear someone out of here if you're trying to shoot them from down there. So really what we're talking about, coming up this sponge and fighting them on even ground or fighting them from right here. If you're fighting them from right here, that means you have to have come from spawn. That's the only way to get to that place. So they need to have known in advance that you were here. And the other annoying thing about this is that because it's so difficult to attack, you can just keep sitting here and rotate your teammates in and out and have them bring in more clams. You need to shut down a push if it's coming from right here because there are limited options for defending it. Those are the two major places you're going to tend to see people coming from, but there are some other ways into the basket that we should also talk about. One of them is if you go down straight through mid. Now the problem with going there is that someone maybe with long range can stand where I'm standing right here and hit everything. But let's say they're not watching that, let's say they're all watching closed. What I can do as the frontliner, and you can see me Andre because I've got the power clam, is usually, you know, you think first to come up this way, but actually what's really smart to do is to paint up this side and come up this way. This is mm, less okay. visible to the opponents and you can still pop up right through the grate and be in range to throw a power clamp. From here, you're closer, you're less likely to miss. This block right here that I'm standing on is fantastic for cover. And one thing you can also do as an attacking team player is if there's a lot of firepower up there, you can use that cover to jump through here and be on the other side and now you're in range to throw it. The one other thing you have to watch is on this side where there's a big rail that goes all the way across and you can definitely just jump from here and land a clam in from that jump. So if you're trying to hard flank, if you're trying to get in and they're really not watching this, this can be an area you can get to. The issue is you run into a long range weapon at some point who is going to be watching that rail and they'll just shoot you off the rail. That option falls off as teams get more organized and players get more familiar with the game, but it's definitely an option to be thinking about, especially if you have to defend against it. Hey dude, this is some really good tips. What do you usually do to practice accuracy? If you're not using motion controls, in my, in my humble opinion, you either have a disability that prevents you from doing so or you're doing it wrong. <laughs> using motion controls is just objectively faster. So as long as it's not like giving you motion sickness or like you have the range of motion in your joints to do it, you should probably be using motion. What you're gonna do is, there's a lot of practice that's good to do in the training room. And uh, there's a video by a charger player, Brian, which I like to recommend to people because it has some really good quick and easy aiming drills. The other thing about aim is that it's really easy to get the muscle memory down and just get really good at shooting the targets but half of knowing how to aim is having good vision of the map and knowing where your opponents are going to be. Because if you can set your aim ahead of time and be shooting where you know they will already be, now your aim is better. Even though, mechanically speaking, you might not have like the faster reaction time, game knowledge goes just as far as the physical ability to aim. So, first of all, Albacore is huge. And one thing that that does is it really gives a big benefit to long-range weapons. So, this bridge right here is a really powerful point for a long-range weapon to be. 
They can shoot on this side, they can shoot on this side, and the only way for the attacking team to approach them is either to get a flank from someplace else, which you can also see. You can see it coming from here. You can see it coming from, like, way over there. Like, if they're trying to go up the, the ramp on the right-hand side, our right-hand side, you can see every potential place that someone can come at you from here, and you'll be able to put shots on them before they can put shots on you. It's really difficult to attack unless you're also a backliner. So with that in mind, there are three ways to get to the basket. One of them is over this bridge. You could conceivably jump over from here and then go in this, the exact same route, which is just <laughs> running down their street and getting to the basket. You can run straight through here, and let's talk about how you can get a clam in from here, because the first thought, right, is probably to walk all the way over here and get to this point, but you don't have to expose yourself that much. They give you this nice little box right here, which lets you hop up here and then hop up here, and from here, I can already hit the basket standing at this corner. Usually what players will do just to make sure that they don't miss is jump off and then hit it in the air. The nice thing about this is that it gives you cover up until you're right about to throw the clam. Whereas if you're trying to walk out this way, you have to like paint your feet up and then swim over here and then be in range. And in that time, someone's probably shot you already. The other way that you can get in is from the far left hand side. If you go up here, you have to watch out for these guys up here. If somebody's up here, they're in a really advantageous place to defend from. You have to drop down, but it's also nice because from here, you're kind of protected by this wall and you can continue to throw clams in. You also got some protection over here. So maybe you come around this side and start throwing clams from here. The only disadvantage of this area is that since it's unpaintable, you're not gonna be able to recover any ink. So as soon as you want to start shooting, you have to be wary of that. Uh, you have to watch for people to jump to this area right here because there's a nice little corner where it's easy to hide mm -hmm. in. Most other places, unless it's like right down here, if they've already gotten into your basket, they're probably not going to try a, a super jump tactic. It's probably going to be on the top right over there. <laughs> I like how Toxic showed up in chat and the very first thing Eric did was post the that's toxic emote because that is toxic. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even know tactical marshmallow goes by toxic you need to be thinking about where are you going to be once the baller explodes or once the protection from it is gone like how are you going to be in a safe position at that time i'm baller okay oh you popped it already okay um we don't have, have power clams also if someone could get to me see when you have nine clams they'll all pop out off of your baller yeah. as soon as you blow it up i'm um, here if we and have a clam! We do, Not but he no, died. Our, uh, you yeah, need to give us more console. warning before you're going in. Because when you're saying, I have baller, I'm thinking, okay, it's charged. And then you're already under the basket, and the person with the power clam, in that case, went down. Uh, we need to be a little bit gotcha. more planful about that. What often happens is you see, I have special. Oh, I, need, I should use special. You like tunnel on the concept of having special. Or like you see someone and you're like, oh, there's someone. I should go and splat them. And all of a sudden that consumes all of your focus. Try to become aware that this thing is a cue that will make you only focus on that one thing and not on the position of my teammates, the position of my opponents. If, for instance, you get a baller and you get it into their basket, but we don't have a clam or we're not in position to jump to you or we've got something more important to defend against, then that baller push will not be helpful to us. Okay. One pushing Andre. I'm trying to One stop them. I stopped right. them. Um, by you, nice. Mike. He's up on their bridge. Okay, I have a booyah bomb. Uh, if you jump to me, I can then booyah us in. I have baller uh, as well. There's one mid by you, Mikey. Careful. I saw a baller. Good looking out. All right, go get it. Shoot, I miss. Yeah, you remember, you Got can't it. make it from there. You have to jump down. Mikey gets another one in. Perfect. And uh, Mikey, you could have thrown that from further back. Reason I say that is that it would have given you less Got of a one chance of mid. getting shot. Yeah, a little bit more safe. Mm-hmm. Man, I think the power clamp blocked my shot. <laughs> That's unfortunate. That I just got three. Because as he threw it, I shot him. Shoot. The and bucket is mid, him. and I got him. I should be able to just get this in right now. I have pity clamp. I, I don't see them being able to stop this in time, and I can booyah bomb as well. So get your butts in here. That's two down. We need more clams. We need more clams. Yeah, we we got to keep the basket uh, open there. Oh, there's a... Nice, nice, nice. Okay. This has been a good push. Okay. 
All right, here we go. Hello. Got rolled golds and Oreos, the breakfast of champions. Pog champ. Have like support utility. Careful, Mikey. There's one watching. Uh, oh, oh. Never mind. <laughs> the jet squelcher is the They're one close, that has close, the close. clam. Oh, there's a blobber there defending uh, it. Couldn't get it. So what they did was smart. They put people in closed first so that we wouldn't notice they were there because of the power clam. And then they ran the power clam through. And at that point, there were three people enclosed. Maybe I'll just go try slosher so I don't have to aim. I'm going to give you this. Well, we're actually going to get a pity oh, clam this oh. way. So actually, all we need I'll are the two power clams. I'll get Andre, pity clam. Just no, go. wait, wait, wait. Uh, go, 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 go. Andre no. was in trouble. I couldn't, yeah. Um, no, I'm going. I got to go. <laughs> all right, just jump into Mikey. I'm under. I'm under. I Jump into Mikey. I'm on here. I'm here. I have you didn't to walk jump it. Walking behind me. Get it in. Got it. Got it. Got it. No. Oh. Look at it. No. Look at it. Look at it. It's, it's spinning yeah, on the bus. It was drilling right when we lost. God yeah. dang oh my it. God. I had to because they were chasing me. I couldn't have jumped. One of the most oh, heartbreaking man. things in Splatoon is that it can be drilling into the basket, but not actually be in the basket yet. Man. Man, I popped oh. off too. Yeah. You did. Oh, Pika Blue. Oh, Pika Blue, my favorite Pokemon, and my favorite game to play with children. <laughs> no, dude, that's Smash Ultimate. <laughs> <laughs> I need clams. I need two clams. Gosh, where the I'm not gonna find Got any two, clams. and then died because I'm dumb. I'm under basket. They're just gonna. They're gonna score before I get there. It. Yeah, they're right there. I missed. Oh my! <laughs> wow. He missed. What a blooper reel. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm gonna threaten in this direction. I'm gonna draw deep them storm over. this direction, confuse them. Actually, they're not they're not defending this in time. I'm just in. Oh, okay. Goodbye. I had a lot of clamps. Pipe, 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 pipe. Okay, there's clamps. Yep. We need one more clam. Literally one clam in the basket and we win. Ugh. I got surrounded. I can get there. Ah, uh, I went down to the junior. Be very careful, he's on snipe. There it is. Got it. Yeah. Good work, Simon. Yeah, I hey, yo, baby. They didn't even see you. Got one. Their power clamp's down. Tent is in mid, and he's bubbling. I might be able to get him. I got him. Uh, and I am going to be able to score now. I'm going to put yeah, I have a few rain out. We're in. All right, this is a good push. Got a tent umbrella down here, and I got him. Still hanging? Yep. I'm just gonna get Ink Storm back up again. Okay, I have baller whenever we happen to need it. They still don't know I'm here. Oh wow. <laughs> uh, if we keep basket open, I could come and get more. I'm just trying to find. We don't need it open in. anymore. <laughs> Gosh. Okay, let's make this happen. I'm going top I'm going to booyah, and then we're just going to go for it. Mm -hmm. for I have nine. I have nine. Nine. I'm down. Uh, if Coach Simon can get two in, then we are in the lead. Nice. Nice. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, they have such bad aim. I was just dancing around him. Throwing yeah, I was like, there's no way that he gets more than two. <laughs> okay, we're going to stop the power clamp. Got him. Trade it with Squeezer. Oh, nice. Simple. The plan is simple. Oh, all right, boys. Woo, we got plus 50 Whoa. for that one. Let's go. Devi says, Simon, you were contesting the charger on that left side. Yes, it's scary. Things to be more of a pest. One, censor them so you can see when they're going to peek you. Two, shoot fall off oh, shots over the yeah. wall to, and make them lose their charge. Oh, yeah, there is a kitty on, on screen right now. Here. Look it. I have revealed yes. the kitty. Oh. I'm just going to play from right over here now. That way, two-thirds of the screen is taken up by Cat, and that is a good proportion. So the fast break in this map, you can kind of just eyeball it from where we're at. Like, you know where the goal is over there, so the fastest way to get to the goal is definitely just going straight this way. And this gives you almost a straight line straight to the goal. You can see I just painted. Now, the thing about this that's problematic is that... This area right up here is basically solely controlled by the opposing team. Yes, in theory, you can actually hop up here, but that's insane. It, it is accessible to us in theory, but in reality, this is just going to be controlled by the enemy team. And you can see from up here, 
they have access to shooting everything over here, everything down here, and a good ways over in this direction. This is a pretty good snipe point if you're on defense, because how do they contest this? They might be able to throw a bomb up and over, but that's about all you can really hope for. And that's not enough to keep a, a decent charger down. So it has an area that is basically unassailable to the attacking team that they have to go past. If they're really entrenched and you're trying to go through there, one good idea is to rotate to another direction. So if I'm starting, I'm over here, and I'm starting to go to the right, and then realize, oh crap, there's a charger right there. There's a splatling right behind that box who's about to look at me. There's a frontliner who's right here trying to rush me, and there's someone enclosed. I should probably not go this way. I'm going to rotate and shift their defense. And you can do this fast enough, usually, that only one or two of them are going to have a chance to catch you. And at that point, you know, that's a frontliner pushing into a 1v4 or a 2v4. And your team should be able to clean that up if they try and defend. And so that can give you an opportunity, if they're hard committing their defense to one side, to rotate to the other side. So what you do is you paint up one of the sides of this block. Any side will do in Rainmaker. Some of them are blocked off in other modes. You swim up here and then you jump across. This is called jump. So that, that might be something that we try and call out. If we see, okay, we're not getting anywhere over here, let's try and push it the other direction. A lot of people don't realize that that area right there is actually accessible to the attacking team. If you paint up that wall, you can put attacking players up there and that's mm. actually pretty threatening. We can also, so there's a little box right here that you can jump, 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 and get up here this way. Okay, Anchovy Games, we've already played this, I think, once. If the Rainmaker's trying to push at me, I know exactly where they're going. They're gonna have to do an awful lot to get it past me. So, breaching their plat is an extremely important thing to do at first. You can do that over Fan, of course, which we've talked about. So I can approach from this side. I can approach from this side. Now, in this mode, you have no way of getting up here. You can do that in Clam Blitz, but you can't do it here. But there is a way that is called sneaky, which is very weird. So if I, I climb up here, you see this fan? If I shoot that, oh. it will come towards me. I can step on it, and then it will slowly move me in the direction of their base. I get up here, and there's the goal right over there. Hmm. Now, this push takes such a long time to set up and you know part of the reason it's usually not effective once the rainmaker moves over to that location right there there's only one thing they could possibly be thinking they're not going to go over fan or if they do they're going to give you plenty of warning so they're probably going this way which means they have to paint the whole thing they have to swim up the uh, edge there they have to jump they also have to wait for this thing to go back so like if you're the, the uh defending team and you really want to troll them, you could do what uh, Andre was just doing and keep <laughs> pushing the, the platform back so that they can only get this far. There's no way to jump up here or to jump across from right here. You need to wait until you can get up onto this, until, you know, the edge of it is in line with where I'm shooting. You can't actually make any forward progress besides letting it slowly move back into place. But look at the points, 60 something. Well, if I get to the edge here, I'm at 30-something. If I drop it down, I'm at about 25. And I'm, you know, clear access to the, the goal here. If you're approaching the goal from anywhere near this direction, use this wall right here as cover. Because from here, if I'm a, a let's say, a Splatling, that's a really common weapon to be defending from this far back, I have trouble hitting over this ledge right here. I have to commit to going all the way up this sponge or from right here and shooting down. And from there, either way, I'm very exposed. So using this ledge right here will help me get a lot closer to the goal before I'm in trouble. Another thing to think about is that the, the goal itself can provide some cover to the attacking team. From spawn here, I don't actually have great angles on someone who's trying to get up the pedestal. I have to kind of come around them like this. One of the issues with Baller in this mode is it can protect the Rainmaker, but it can also provide a surface against which to throw a lethal bomb to splat the Rainmaker. Let's talk about who the Rainmaker Carrier is. It's usually going to be the Backliner or the Support. 
One of the two. The situation that we might want the support to do it is that Andre has a Stingray that we want to save because we're in the lead and we need him to use it so that he can splat the Rainmaker. The situation that we have Andre take it is most situations. We only need to cover area that's close to the Rainmaker, which means that we really don't need the range for the area we're trying to control. Right now, there's nobody between the Rainmaker and the goal. Okay. And I so we lost. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's how Rainmaker goes. That position between the Rainmaker and the goal is more important than having someone on the tower during a tower push. If, if it's not there for even three seconds, then that happens. That's very fitting uh, as a first Rainmaker match as a squad. <laughs> okay, come on. There I need go. help up the wall. I need help up the wall. Oh. I'm coming. Yeah, Rainmaker can't paint up walls, so if you see the Rainmaker by a wall, please paint it. It can. What you want to do, Simon, is shoot an uncharged shot, like a not fully charged shot. You don't want to get the ball up, but if you just, you know, ha half charge, like a, like a charger tap shot, that's still usually sufficient for getting yourself up places. Uh, I think they won. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're closing mm, not in yet. on the pedestal. Like I said, not yet. Oh, we're still in the lead, huh? Yeah. We're going to get this out of here, though. <laughs> it resets it to middle. It's a legitimate strategy. If it's anywhere near where you don't want it to be, that's often the best idea. And then you just spend your time painting and resetting so that they have to do the whole push over again. Good job, Mikey. Good stingray, Andre. Damn, you're retreating. A little bit. Uh oh. oh. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> nice dodge. How did I slip out of that? That was insane. <laughs> Got him with the bomb. <laughs> Let's go! <Yeah. laughs> Let's go! I rolled it right to the edge. Nothing. Ooh. Nothing but it, dude. Funk ass. I love how we've had this very consistent cat cam. <laughs> it's great. great. She's been snoozing there. And hasn't moved an inch. Um, that kind of, uh, so remember, between there. the Rainmaker and the goal, that's where we want to start, and then, you know, position around that, but always be ready to collapse on it. Oh god, they're pushing forward really coordinated. Yikes. Oh, I was trying okay. to get the Rainmaker Oh, wow. Um, just drop bombs in front of it. It's the best we can hope to do right now. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. That's game. Holy cow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that was a practice team. Everyone be very careful about being too close to the Rainmaker Shield if they're going to pop it. But let the, let's let try and rush in there and get there because we have four bombs. We can get that pop if we're moving fast enough to get there. The, the way that we're probably going to want to go to try and get pop to start with is to paint the rail that's in our base and jump from it onto the left stack and then throw bombs from there. One of the nice things about Rainmaker <laughs> is that a game can be over in one minute. <laughs> yeah. You get to play more of them. Seconds. Thanks for watching, everybody. We do this uh, every Tuesday, usually at 1 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, so the Pacific Time, really. It's been fun. We'll see you next time.